We're heading back to the motherland She shouldn't have to wait on me Back to the motherland Overseas, homie, please, I grow more The scenes that I've seen, homie, people die for Believe in a dream I achieve I strive for, Sashim is a chief, homie I said I'm tired of people these days I'm tired of all of these fakes I'm tired of all these opinions I'm hearing like I do not care what you say I'm tired of people these days I'm tired of all of these fakes I'm tired of all these opinions I'm hearing Look, I said I'm tired of people these days, man Yo, 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 this is season two premiere of the Shavero Projects. I'm your host, Tor Hipper. I've got a new co-host here. Hi. Lucy Power. And we're joined by our new guest for season two premiere, Sachem. I'm going to let these two cats introduce themselves. We'll start off with you, Lucy. Okay. All right. Well, um... I am Australia's number one fitness model escort, award-winning content creator, um, porn star, and now Naked News reporter. Whoop That's whoop. me. <laughs> um, my name is Sachem. I'm a 21-year-old African-American Nunaku Nugi man. I uh, grew up in Adelaide and on Minjetaba, North Stradbroke Island. I'm a poet, hip-hop artist, spoken word artist, and overall cool guy. <laughs> I think you're pretty cool, man. <laughs> so on today's show, we're going to be talking about some music, hustle, entrepreneur type shit. Yeah. The real deal when it comes to music. Yes, yeah, so. So um, I'll let Lucy kick off the questions here. <laughs> you got the Just first throwing one. throwing me under the bus. You got the first question here. Oh my God. Um, okay, well, I Let's guess. Let's get it. We could start by saying or asking about your most recent single that's just been released why don't you tell us a bit about that yeah so literally today 26th of february i released a new song called z's yeah. um i mean it's a reference to sleeping i guess um it's yeah it's an insane song like i kind of started writing it about two years ago and then only just finished it up towards the middle of the end of last year um and it's just like the journey is me going from being a kind of young, indigenous, uh, African-American man in Australia, kind of dabbling within and out of s abuse of substances and like battling my ego and battling like the just general ego of humans themselves and then coming to some type of realisation of like, you know, all of these frustrations can't be from other people. Like there's definitely something within myself that I need to... Mm. Uh, awaken or understand and realize um, and so then the second verse kind of um, after the poem it's, it sort of just wraps up in a way that I just realize that all of these frustrations that I put outwards are just reflections of myself and that I need to go inwards to find the answer I need to go inwards to find my own peace mm. um, so yeah it's it's a and it's a super super dope beat made by um, Brisbane producer Mules Mecca um, who's one of Australia's OGs, one of Brisbane's OGs. So shout out to Mules. Um, but yeah, out on all platforms now, so check it out. Check it out, check it out. The biggest, let's see, what's my, what's my question here? <laughs> I guess my question comes down to the grind of being a full-time musician. Yeah. Which I am all too familiar with being a full-time hustler. I, I hustle full time now. That's it. I hustle. I'm a hustler. So I guess the biggest one for me, man, is when it comes to that hustle, especially about waking up and shit, especially when shit goes really, really bad. Really south. Really south. Okay, it's happened south to me. Side. It's probably happened to you. It's happened <laughs> to everyone. Mm -hmm. When shit Definitely. gets south, yeah. but you've still got the balls to just get the work done. Yeah. How? What does that look like? If you can just... I don't know if you want to share a f experience. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, the industry itself is, like, so volatile in terms of, like, longevity in it. There's no um, guarantees. There's no nothing. And especially, I think, with um, – there's a huge market saturation at the moment. That's what I'm going to call it instead of, <laughs> instead of other stuff. Market saturation. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people um, – 
trying to rap at the moment. It's um, it's coming. It's not becoming difficult to stand out and actually make it a, a career, but it's um, it's making it challenging and it's just making it. Uh, you have to think in different ways. So, um, yeah, it's honestly for me like I've definitely had those down times where it's like shit. What am I gonna do from here? But I think it's all about just the mentality and just like actually purposefully seeking out different opportunities and mm. not sticking to one lane. Yeah. Like I, I started off with poetry. Yeah. Um, and then I moved into the music. And then I started doing a little bit of theatre. And then then I started getting heavily into my music. And so now I'm at a point where I'm I'm performing at QPAC. I've got a I just I'm about to finish up a six week season at QPAC with the Club Cremorne Theatre, working with like some insane artists like Tom Thumb, like world renowned beatboxer, um, Damian Power, Jacqueline Fury, a burlesque dancer. So it's just like it's I'm not I'm not specifically just doing one thing. I'm finding ways to monetize in other ways. And it's um you know, it, as you said, it's a grind. Yeah. But it it's also worth it. And I think that when I look even back on it, like I'm still really, really like knee deep in it right now. But when I even just look back to a year ago, two years ago, like I 100% would not know that I'd be sitting in front of like 160 white people every Thursday, Friday, Saturday <laughs> night rapping in a theatre. Hell and, yeah. You know, so it's like it's just about finding ways to just navigate it because – Nothing's ever going to be how you plan it to be. Mm. So you better know how to like kind of move around that and just think of new ways, be creative. and Definitely. Um, yeah. It's... I think diversification is the key word there. Yeah. And if you've got skills across different platforms, then you're going to reach different markets. So you're really going to be able to access different audiences and that's how you'll grow, basically. Yeah. And I think also the superstar life is over with. Like there's no mm. – there's not going to be like another – like Justin Bieber, or they, they might be, I don't fucking know. They're, but like you look at Michael Jackson, say for example, right? Yeah. He stands on stage for five minutes and people pass out and faint in the crowd <laughs> without him even saying a word. Like there's not going to be that anymore. I hope that's what happens with the artists that I'm managing eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that because of that, like um, there's, there's going to, ha- you're going to have to find ways to, to make, money because you can't just i don't think you can be just a rapper or you can't just be a poet or you can't be just a singer like there has to be some form of entrepreneurship behind Mm -hmm. that and and something i've been learning now is like the huge difference between the music yeah and then the music business it's Mm. it's two completely separate worlds you're preaching to acquire on that yeah yeah those artists that i'm managing and looking to manage can you uh pay attention to this guy (laughs) (laughs) Every time I talk about contracts and stuff, what the fuck? What? Talking about contracts? Business? Mm. What? Yeah. I totally funny. get it. Like, Lucy, do you reckon you've got uh, any similar experiences? Not Obviously not from music, but from other stuff? Uh, in terms of, like, the difference yeah. between, like, performing and then the business side? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's how people become successful. If you understand that what we do is business, mm. then that's really important. But also, if... You're doing it for the love of it. You're a musician and a poet and you're creative. So if you can still maintain that love of your craft, but Mm -hmm. then respect and understand and appreciate the hustle and the business side of it, then you're a winner. Yeah. Because, like, the good thing is with this as well, with this conversation we're having right now, is the fact that we're attacking it from all different angles. Mm. I come in from an admin management side. You're coming in from a creative artist and you're coming in from an entertainment background. Mm. So we've got three different, very unique and different circumstances yep. when it comes to the hustle and grind of getting shit done. Yeah. And like, especially what you were saying about diversification, this is one thing that I push musicians all the time and talking about. You know, you got to focus on your social media. You got to yeah. focus on your Instagram. You got to focus on businesses because, look, your music alone is not gonna. It's not gonna do it. As no. great as it is, there are so many aspects when it comes to music that yeah, man. this is just a you know the music's the big part, but yeah. then there's also small little mechanics that need need a gel in. Yeah, and I think like I went through a huge phase, um, like especially kind of I think last year and the year before where I really kind of just despised social media and 
like anybody who that like was deeply embedded in that mm. and I, I kind of and even just anything to do with money because I, I, I started to do a lot of research about like the Australian government and like how um, how they've come into ex- existence after colonizing Australia and the indigenous people and I, I learned a lot about like capitalism and shit and so for a long time I, I actually despised that entire thing and to the point that I like didn't care about it where I was ready to just put my music out and then not follow it up but I have I have kind of grown a respect for it you know grown a um an understanding that this is a part of the life that we live now mm. um and it's just something that you have to do even yeah. even like as much as at that point in my life I didn't want to be a part of it like I, I stayed in it yeah um because I I did understand that like if I didn't have these platforms like probably not a lot of people would yeah actually listen to it and and i'm i've and the last person that would make music for someone else first mm. i make music for myself first that i hope helps other people so yeah. when it come down to making money off of it i was like fuck what do i need to make money for if i'm making music that i love and i'm playing my own music in my car and, and enjoying it mm. um but then i yeah i guess you realize that you're putting time into this mm. and and you you want to spend more time on it and so the only way to be able to free yourself up to spend more time on it is learning how to make money from what yeah. you do and yeah so that's that's been my goal just using my social media mm. and using this technological era um to kind of boost myself up in a monetary way yeah well, I think I think the biggest thing as well, and it's good that you actually touched up on that, is a lot of creatives have this really romantic notion on how it is when it comes to their art or their music yeah. and stuff like that. And unfortunately, it gets hit really hard when it's like... It's like a burst in your bubble. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, shit, I... <laughs> I need, I got bills to pay yeah. or Shit. I can't be, I, you know, I can't be, I can't be doing this full time Mm-mm. because it, it, you know, just be unrealistic. Mom's going to keep you, you can, out of the house. But if you can look at it, if you can look at it and adapt it and say, all right, I need these platforms or I need to, I need to go to this meeting or I need to drive there. Or, I need to do this. And you, you just need to hustle, hustle, hustle. And on the as- other aspects, then it gives you time. Yeah to embrace like all the great artists all the great artists and painters were all commissioned yeah they were all commissioned and you know does anyone ever be like man that guy that guy sold his soul out he he was a sellout no No, they're like they're two big different things two Mm. different topics and i i know that's the kind of beauty of it though like yeah you learn That, that that's what i that's what i love the most learning and sitting down with people who have been doing the music business for years now like i'm i've just signed to um footstomp music on a on a like a project management deal yeah and i I sit down with those boys graham asho and all that and just like listen to what they've got to say and how they've navigated the industry and it's such an interesting thing and I, i despised it for a long time but you just learn to love everything, I think, about it because if you choose to if you choose to dislike one thing, then you'll find something else to dislike and there's no point because then you just find yourself in a rabbit hole. Especially in this industry, you can't take things personally. You can't you can't um have, you don't have time to not like things. You just yeah. all you have to do is just see it for what it is and then give it your best. And and that's that's honestly, I look I look back on the past like five six years that i've been doing this and that's all i've been doing just like taking every single opportunity to learn like i don't recall a time that i said no to something over the past five or six years Mm -hmm. and i guess that that's a a huge reason as to why i am able now to kind of have a few eggs to put out into the world into different baskets and and make some gain back from that and i'm not saying in, in any way that i'm like i'm i'm fucking like paying off all my bills and, yeah. and shit yeah. but like you know i'm 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 doing Still what i need hard. to do yeah. like i'm doing what i need to do and i see it slowly slowly 
um, making its way up. And that that's how it happens. It doesn't happen like mm. overnight, like people think. Like it's not like you're gonna put out one song or even one EP or even one album and it'll blow up. Like this is a grind. And you know what? Streams don't give you shit all money. Like yeah. you, you have to go out and perform for people. Yeah. Like you have to go and get sponsorship deals or partnership mm-hmm. deals. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not even like honestly, like you probably make less money and you probably get more free shit. Like yeah. Yeah. I don't have to pay to to hire out venues. Yeah. yeah. You know, whereas some people might make the money to hire out venues. I don't I don't have to pay for some of my clothes, but some people have to pay for their clothes. So mm. it's about kind it's of It's about looking at looking at looking at things the right way. Yeah. Know? And yeah. and just and just not yeah. Just finding different ways. You don't have to get paid, but you can get things for free. So it's yeah. like that's, I, know, I guess that's that hustler's mentality you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. I know um I know Lucy, you wanted to touch up on some of the more creative s- sections before we end part one. Yeah, well what I wanted to know as a personal fan was your um sort of your build up and your lead up into what it is you do now. And you just said you've been doing it for like five or six years. Mm. But what I wanna know is like your musical talents. Like did that come from your family? Or is that just like a natural thing that yeah. you have? You know, you sometimes, you know, a singer, their mum is a brilliant singer or something like that. Yeah. Um so, but also another question um that you can add build on to that is like what was the first time that you wrote a song but you said because you were doing poetry before that as well so Mm. i'll just leave you with that to answer (laughs) well the in terms of like where the musical side of myself comes like it's it's actually been a funny journey so my dad is black american and he um he grew up in tampa florida oh wow and so his best friend growing up was shock g from digital underground um the guys, I don't know if you know, but they kind of brought Tupac up. And so dad oh. ended up spending a lot of time with Digital Underground and Tupac and the crew in LA. And so it's disgustingly insane. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> pretty impressive. I got, <laughs> yeah, I got a pretty crazy story that I went to I went to his house in, in Tampa and I went and saw and touched Tupac's plaques that he wow. actually received on stage. So uh. that, that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, but, and, and my mum, um, over the past kind of, six or seven years has um, really built an extremely impressive and a very um, sustainable arts business um, that is about homewares and linen and ceramics and storytelling about our indigenous heritage on the island, on Stradbroke Island. So when it when you look at that side of things, like there is definitely that historical um, lineage of artistry, mm. I guess, and also like, as indigenous people, we've been storytellers for millions of years. Like that's that's just what we've been doing. Yeah. So that's probably, I'd say, where that comes from. But when I was in grade three, my mum put me into guitar lessons, and I guess from there I played a bit. But I was a sports kid growing up. Like I ah. represented Australia, like indigenous Australian team in Australia and AFL. Oh, fabulous! I went over to the US and played basketball. Nice. Um and. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, and I think just I, I got taken from the island um, to go to high school at John Paul College. Yeah, and I had a lot of experiences there that involved like racism and mm. just vilification and discrimination, and um, it kind of caved me in a little bit. Mm. Got a little bit of, and this is leading into your next question. Yeah, um, kind of caved me in a little bit, and really. Um, I, was, I felt very lost because I, I was living with other people. I, I went through s- six different families through the school oh. in five years. Mm. So it was just like so much instability. And then I guess when I was, um, I think I was about 15 or 16, I was away from home as in Ireland for about a good six months. And I had a dream and uh, in that dream, like my ancestors come to me. Mm on my home country and they weren't talking they were talking to me but I couldn't hear what they were saying and I kind of I woke up in tears and I heard these voices in my in the dream that I I under, kind of understood was language yeah and then I um, we have a dictionary for my language on the island and so I kind of went through that book with my auntie and just uh, figured out what these words were and um, I ended up writing a poem that was based around what I felt that that 
those ancestors are trying to tell me in that dream. And so now, that, and I, pu- I published that poem through Overland and I won the Udru Nunakal Poetry Prize mm. through the Queensland Poetry Festival for that poem. And that was the first poem I had written. Wow. And then from there, it's just been like a whirlwind of just like opportunity. Like I, I after that, I got mentored by Luca Lesson, like one of his, like, Austra- like he won the Australia's Slam um, Poetry Competition and yeah. one of the world's greatest poets that like in our modern era, yeah. uh, he helped me link up with Akala, the UK rapper, poet, educator, mm-hmm. author. Um, and I guess from there, like hanging out with these creative guys who were in tune with themselves and poets, but also making music kind of led me on this trail of making music but it wasn't until that i i was emceeing at the island vibe festival Mm -hmm. on stradbroke and i met my brother chris tamoy i was about 14 i I was sorry i was about 16 and he was i think it was 20 and he was performing on stage and he thought i was like he thought i was like 23 or 24 so Mm -hmm. after his performance he was like oh you want to go get a beer across the road i was like bro i'm only 17 man like, oh, <laughs> what, what the fuck so he um ended up just coming to my house and bringing his guitar and we jammed oh, really and um yeah. we made a song wow. it was like i cannot thank you girl i've always been right by my side I always will be yeah until the day i die and so that was like the first kind of <laughs> thing I ever made. And that I'm, just gave me goosebumps then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of that's nice. where, it, where it started and, and how I am where I am now. I love that. There's lot, been a huge amount of people that have helped me since then. Mm. Can't even list Shout them. out to all those people for getting him to this moment. <laughs> yeah, so many people. I can't, even, I can't even list them all. The pinnacle of his career is being on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he can, he's oh, retiring. No, he's retiring that. after this. I'm retired. Nah. Fuck that. There's no retirement. There's always fucking 24-7 hustle. Yeah, just hustle, hustle, hustle game. Well, that wraps up part one of the podcast. We've got a special podcast where we're actually doing part one and part two this for the special season two premiere. Season two is going to be fucking epic, but... We're going to move on to part two very soon where me and old Sachem over here, we're going to get deep and personal and talk about some spiritual shit. Sir. Chat, chat. <laughs>